Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to migrate Smart AI to another project and get it all up and running. Um, if you're planning on migrating Smart AI to Survival Game Kit, I'll have a separate video um, linked in the description for that. So we're going to start by going to our project that we're migrating it to. For me, it's just a first person template. And then we're going to go to our project settings, then to collision and we're going to create a new object channel and we're going to call it trigger um, sp uh, spelled correctly trigger and we'll set it to ignore make sure it is spelled the same way I've spelled it here and then accept and then we're going to create a new trace channel and that's going to be called weapons again spelled like this with the capital and we're going to have it block and then another one called cover and that will be block as well. Next we're going to click the preset drop down and we're going to create a new one and this will be called dead player spelled again the way I spell it here and that will be query only it will be a pawn um, we can leave that at the description so we want visibility camera and weapons to all be ignore and cover uh, world static and dynamic is block that's correct then pawn ignore um, physic body all of these are going to be set to ignore like that next we're going to make some changes to the pawn one so double click that we're going to set it to ignore the weapons and the cover and we're going to um, set it to ignore projectile and an overlap trigger so it should look like this now and accept that next we're going to make a change in the character mesh preset as well and we're just going to set this to ignore cover like that and accept and one more will be trigger and we just want to make sure that cover is uh, disabled for that as well and uh, weapons like that. So now we've done all our collision settings we can go back to our map and we're going to go to edit, uh, editor preferences and search for EQS and enable it. This will always need to be enabled in any project that you're using Smart AI in um, otherwise you'll get errors on startup and um, it won't work. Um, so once we've enabled that you need to restart your project quickly so now I'm back in our project. Um, next up we'll be checking if we have a nav mesh. So to do this you can just hit P on your keyboard and check to see if there's any like a green effect on the floor. Um, we don't have one in our level so to do that we're just going to go over to here and search for nav and we'll put in the nav mesh bounds volume. So we'll just do that. You can see um, I've got the green uh, effect on my level now. Um, if you hit P, if you don't have that, you can hit P and it will show up. So now I'm just going to make this larger, like that, so it covers our level. And you're going to want to make sure that any level that you want AI on, you'll need one of these um, covering the level to make sure the AI can move. So next, we're going to change our game mode. So we'll go to uh, settings, project settings then maps and modes and we'll change this to our um, oh I forgot to migrate the files over so we'll go back to our uh, level and um, we're going to now go to our smart AI um, project here and we're going to select our um, smart AI folder and go to migrate hit OK and um, you want to find your project then the content folder and we'll just do select folder and give it a few seconds to copy the files over. Okay, so now I'm back in my project and uh, we've got our Smart AI folder here. So we can go to settings, project settings, and set our game mode to the um, AI example GM. Now the next part is really up to you. If you're happy to use the player character from Smart AI, then um, you're pretty much good to go. 
Um, if you have a custom character, there's a few things you'll need to do to it to make it work correctly with the AI. So I'm just gonna go through those uh, things now. First, we're gonna need to go to our um, game mode. Um, so we'll go Smart AI Blueprints, then AI Example Game Mode. And I'll just bring that over here. And we'll change this to our first person character. Obviously, this would be your character um, and compile that. Then next, we're gonna go to our um, first person BP Blueprints, and I'm gonna open the first person character. So this would obviously be your equivalent character. Um, and there's a few things we need to do. So the first thing is go to class defaults and search for tag and click the plus. And we're gonna add AI and we're also gonna add player. Uh, player like that. Then we're gonna go to add component and search for active, uh, pl BP player activator there, like that. And we can compile that. And then over here, um, obviously it will be different for every project because if you have your own weapon system, it will be slightly different. For this, I'm just going to be changing the um, first person projectile to the example projectile um, uh, that comes with Smart AI. So it's that one. And I'm going to click the drop down option here, drag out from owner, and do self like that. So next, um, obviously the first person character doesn't include a health system or anything like that, but you probably have one if you're using your own character. So there's a couple of things you need to do just to let the AI system know um, whether your player is dead or not. So to do that, we're going to go class settings, we'll remove this search, and we'll do um, implemented interfaces and do add. We'll search for AI interface like that. And that will add some new interface uh, functions over here. So we're gonna look at AI is dead. So basically this is used so the AI knows whether or not the player's dead. Um, I don't have a health variable here, but I'll quickly make one just make as an example. So if you have a health variable, um, you would want to get it here and you'd want to check if it's less than or equal to zero and plug that in here. So it will return that the um, player is dead if its health is less than or equal to zero. Um, another thing that you'll probably want to look at is the actor attack target. So again, um, the first person character example doesn't have anything like this, but you would want to um, store an actor reference of whoever your player last attacked um, and put, plug that in here. So that tells any AI that are following this character um, who they should attack. Um, so just keep that in mind. Again, I'm not gonna do this now because I don't really, the blueprint doesn't have it. Um, but we can hit compile. Then the last thing we need to do is go back to our event graph. Then um, we're just gonna click the browse to uh, icon on here. That'll take us to our example projectile. We can open that up. And we're gonna select our projectile movement. And we're gonna tick initial velocity and local space. And we'll change the velocity in the X to something like 3000, like that. Then we need to go to projectile collision and we can go down to here and we want to change its object type to a projectile like that. Then we can compile that. And now we can test this out. So I'm going to go back to the first person level and you can see I've added a civilian AI into the world. I'm just going to hit play and he should start moving around like that. And if I shoot at him, he'll actually start running away and he'll uh, take damage um, and eventually if I hit him enough he'll die. So that's about it guys, um, hopefully you found this useful. Um, if there's any questions or problems um, please leave a comment or join the discord and I'll do my best to help you guys out. 
So thank you for watching.